This is problem number nine on the practice problems for test number two. Simplify each expression where possible. A, square root of 27x cubed over 72y to the fourth. So the first thing I encourage folks to do is reduce. If 27 and 72 have a common factor that you can cancel, then you should do that first. Absolutely. Same thing with the other stuff, the variables, but here x and y don't have anything in common, so there's nothing we can do. But what number goes into 27 and 72? Pause the video here. Come back when you think you found it. So if you said 3 goes into both, that's correct. There's a bigger number that goes into both, and that's the one we're going to use. 9 goes into both of these numbers. 9 goes into 27 three times, and 9 goes into 72 eight times. So however you get there, you should get down to 3 eighths. That's our reduced fraction. And now what we're going to do is split this thing up into radical that's good, and then uh, the radical that's bad. So uh, actually, maybe I'll leave it as one radical for right now. But what I want to do is split that 3x cubed over 8y to the fourth into two pieces, part of which is good, meaning it's a perfect square, and part of which is just left over. So I'm going to have two fractions uh, when we're done. So let's take a look at the 3. Is 3 a perfect square? Definitely no. Is there any factor of 3 that's a perfect square? Still no. 3 is going into our bad fraction. It's the second one. x cubed. x cubed is not a perfect square. But if I had only x squared, if I had one fewer x than the x cubed, then it would be a perfect square. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring uh, two of the x's over there to the good fraction, and that leaves a single x over there in the bad fraction. So we still have x cubed. There's still three x's in there, but now they're split up. Okay, 8 on the bottom. 8 is not a perfect square, but there is a perfect square that goes into 8. 4. 4 goes into 8 evenly. So 4 is going to go in the good fraction, but we've got to put something in the bad fraction to make sure we still have 8 in the bottom. That's 2. 4 times 2 on the bottom, still 8. And then finally, y to the 4th. Is y to the 4th a perfect square? The answer is yes, actually. Um, y to any even power would be a perfect square, so we'll put it there. And now we're going to use this really nice property of radicals that says if you have a multiplication inside a radical, you can split it up and multiply two different radicals. So we'll just split these two, two apart. x squared over 4y to the 4 times 3x over 2. And then we're going to bring out the good stuff. So x squared on the top becomes x. Technically becomes absolute value of x. We're not going to worry about that here. Square root of 4 on the bottom is a 2. Square root of y to the 4th on the bottom is y to the 2. Although you've got to be really clear, it's not, it's not a 2 because the square root of that power of 4 is 2. It's a 2 because when you take a square root of x to a power, you have to just divide that power by 2. It's not the square root of 4 that we're seeing. It's really 4 divided by this index 2. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, it's just kind of unfortunate that it's a coincidence here that you might be misled as to where that y squared came from. All right, the other radical is sitting here with a multiplication. There's nothing we can do with it. So there's our final answer. x over 2y squared times the square root of 3x over 2. And then we'll come down here. Okay, so part b, square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 45 plus 4 square root of 20. So when we're adding and subtracting radicals, the only time we can combine is if the radicals are so-called like radicals, which means exactly the same index and exactly the same radicand. Basically what that means is you can only add radicals that, uh, for example, if we had 8 square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 3, we could put them together and make a 10 square root of 3, but only because it's exactly the same square root of 3 in both terms. Okay, so let's see if we can get the current um, problem, part B here, to look like something with like radicals. Square root of 5 is about as simple as it's ever going to be. We just copy it. Minus 2 times. But the square root of 45 we can do something with. 45 is not a perfect square, but there is a factor of 45 that's a perfect square. So what is it? What nice number goes into 45? Okay, 15 and 3 go into 45, but neither 15 nor 3 is a nice number. So you're looking for a factor of 45 that's nice. It's a perfect square. What we're looking for is a 9, 
and then 9 times 5 gives us the 45, plus 4 times square root of 20, same idea, 20 is not a perfect square, but 20 does have a factor that's a perfect square, so what nice number, what perfect square goes into 20, it's 4, and then 5 is what's left over, equals square root of 5 minus 2 times, and now we know we saw it up above, I'm not going to write it out in as much detail, but we know that we can take that um, 9 outside of the square root. So what is the square root of 9? It's a 3. And then there's the square root of 5 plus 4. And then the same idea, this 4 can come outside, so take its square root. And the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 left inside. And I've been really careful here to write out these dots. It's all multiplication, although you wouldn't know it looking at the original problem because we're a little bit lazy. We don't write those dots unless we really have to. So uh, it's multiplication here when it comes time to deal with this, for example, the 2 and the 3, as well as the 4 and the 2. We're multiplying them together. So we get square root of 5 minus 6 square root of 5 plus 8 square root of 5. And now, because I kept saying square root of 5, we finally have like radicals, just like we did in that blue example that we made up. So let's push all these radicals together. So I've got, I'll put an invisible 1 there, 1 square root of 5 minus 6 plus 8. So 1 minus 6 plus 8. Very carefully combine all those things together. Hopefully we come out at the end with a 3. What do you do with all these square roots of 5? Do we do we add the fives together? Do we multiply the fives together? No and no. We don't do anything to them. So 3 square root of 5 is our final answer.